Howdy ho, fellow gamers and YouTubers and lovers of retro gaming goodness. Nintendo here once again. And of course, you guys probably expected another pickup video, so here you go. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I got a lot of stuff from uh, a few different people and uh, some pretty good deals over here, um, including a console over here and uh, a box for a console as well that is pretty sweet. So without further ado, let's just get to it because there's a lot of games actually. Um, and games, this is an unusual video for me because this is stuff that I don't normally get and uh, to be honest, stuff I wasn't really even collecting. and. Uh, yeah, some of it just kind of fell in my lap. So, uh, here you go. Starting off with a couple garage sale finds. Uh, I went to this random garage sale, and they gave me five games for five bucks, basically. And uh, two of the games were Super Nintendo Sports titles, and I actually already traded those in. But the other three games were uh, FIFA 96 for uh, PlayStation in the long box. It's totally cracked and stuff, but I mean, for a buck, you can't beat it. It's complete. It's actually, the disc is in good condition. Uh, I don't know, normally go for sports games, but I know you know a lot of people are after long box games, so I just kind of keep those around. Um, the other game that I got, the second game that I got from them was pretty interesting. I've never heard of this game. I'd never seen it before. Uh, it's got some cover damage on it, and uh, it's not in the greatest shape, but it is uh, complete, and that is uh, Tyrants for the Sega Genesis. Uh, Tyrants Fight Through Time. Now, this is an interesting game. I actually just looked up footage recently. And it uh, looks like kind of a strategy tactics game where you like go through time. And uh, yeah, this actually looks pretty cool. Despite it being a cheap game, um, yeah, this looks like a fun one. So I'm going to hold on to that one for a little while for sure. And then um, the last one from that garage sale that I got that I haven't traded in yet uh, was uh, Sonic and & Knuckles. And of course it's missing that top flap. They always are. Um, I actually just had a copy of this uh, that I got from my buddy Garrett's garage sale. And uh, the pin right here was like bent in a little bit, so I'm actually replacing it with this one. This one's in slightly better condition, but not a whole lot or anything like that. But um, yeah, Sonic and Knuckles, I've actually yet to play Sonic 3 or Sonic and Knuckles. Uh, I've actually only played the first two Sonics, and uh, I do enjoy them, but I feel like I haven't put enough time into just those two games to even like start playing the third one in Sonic and Knuckles. But it is pretty cool how with the uh, Sonic 3 and Sonic Knuckles together you get like a full game uh, or basically two games in one. It's pretty neat. Um, okay, and then uh, my buddy Dan just sold me a random Nintendo game. It was cheap um, and it was something I needed. I haven't had this since I was a kid and I had a gnarly sticker on the front which I got off really clean. Uh, Highlight for Nintendo. Notoriously bad game, uh, but still kind of part of my childhood and uh, kind of been on the lookout for a little while. You always seem to see it for like eight, ten bucks for some damn reason, but I think Dan sold it to me for like four or five. And uh, normally I probably wouldn't even pay that, but it did come with a manual. It's got a little bit of writing on it, but uh, pretty cool actually. So, uh, Highlight. Not a recommended game. That game is impossible. The RPG elements that are really wonky and the hit detection is just silly. It's just a silly game. Alright, so what have we got next for you guys? Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you the box for the system I got. This came from my buddy Josh, who I've done a few trades with. I got my uh, Sega CD uh, inbox for it and uh, 32X inbox for it from him and a few other things. This bad boy I got from him. Um, it's a little beat up. It's got a few things wrong with it, but for the price that I got it for, it was well worth it. Uh, I didn't actually pay anything for this. I had just picked up a boxed copy of uh, Mario 64 for uh, N64, obviously N64, and uh, traded him that for this because I'd much rather have this. Now this has the manual, the manual for the zapper, and the warranty, which he actually bought the warranty separately uh, just for putting in this and uh, it does have some black tape around here and some black tape on the inside and uh, there's this huge warranty sticker on it but actually honestly I'm glad the warranty stickers on there it's pretty cool and it's got the Toys R Us price tag $99.99 pretty damn awesome this is a really neat pickup um, yeah it's got some yellowing up here too but I mean this is just awesome it's really neat to have this on my shelf I have it way up top of my shelf and uh, here's the back it's this is really cool to see something like this, man. It's like, I've never actually had a, Mar a Nintendo box. My Nintendo was uh, used, 
when I got it. So uh, yeah, pretty neat. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. It's even got advertisements for the uh, controllers on one side, and uh, it's got advertisements for games on the other. Pretty freaking neat. I'm pretty stoked about that. So uh, yeah, thank you very much, Josh. Hope you hopefully you're enjoying your uh, N64 box, uh, Mario 64 box. Um, yeah, that was the only. <laughs> N64 box I actually had. I don't really collect N64 and I never run into boxed games. I was going to keep it, but couldn't really pass up that deal, so yeah. Alright, so the next one's a big one. The next one actually comes from my sister and uh, her boyfriend, Jason, and uh, thank you, Veronica and Jason, ahead of time. And uh, what I got was actually a bunch of games that you normally never see on this channel. Uh, you guys know that I generally tend to collect from like the Sega Master System and NES era all the way up to like kind of PS2, Xbox, OG Xbox era. That's like my, that's my shit. That's my time period. I don't generally collect for stuff before NES or Master System and I don't generally co collect for stuff after uh, PS2 and Xbox. There are exceptions but uh, generally doesn't happen. Well I've got a pile of stuff to show you that totally breaks that rule. Um, my sister had a bunch of Atari games and Intellivision games just sitting around. I don't remember where she said she got them from, but uh, she got them cheap, and uh, they ended up being super cheap for me, 10 bucks. In fact, I still owe her 10 bucks for them, um, but they were just, they're all cheapo games, but the Intellivision games, some of them are boxed, which is pretty cool, and I know they're not worth anything, but man, some of the art is really cool on them, and uh, yeah, I was thinking about buying an Intellivision. I saw one on Craigslist not that long ago. Um, I also kind of want a ColecoVision. We'll see. I don't know. I'm just not really into that pre-NES stuff, even though that is my era. It's just, you know, can't beat NES and uh, Master System graphics. But anyways, just getting on with the pickups. I'm just going to kind of go through these really quickly because most of these I am not familiar with, not being an Atari player or a television player. And uh, a lot of these have little price tags on them. I'm going to eventually try to take these out. Um, anyways, I got Lock and Chase. Now this one's kind of unusual. This one's shaped like an Intellivision game. If you take out this bottom portion, it basically is an Intellivision game. It's got basically a little adapter for a 2600, so this is pretty interesting. There are a few games like this that I've seen uh, that were basically... Well, this was made for Intellivision, and, and supposedly there is a copy where you can peel this white sticker off, and there is a blue label from the original Intellivision one, so I don't know. Or, or I'm, I'm full of crap, and I just saw a picture on... Uh, the internet that was not true but uh, anyways lock and chase pretty cool uh, definitely weird with the strange shapes Atari had a way of doing that that's what you get when you license out all your products and let other people <laughs> make your products for you it's, it ends up being a clusterfuck and all your cartridges are shaped different so uh, this one doesn't have an end label but it's called surround and it's got two games on it, surround and video graffiti I've never actually heard of this one before cheapo again I mean most Atari games are cheapos but uh, yeah, just cool to see one I've never seen before. This one's the 27 Telegames Tank Plus. And, uh, yeah, you know, this is really cool because these things, like combat and all that stuff, they have multiple games on them. And, I mean, it may not seem like there would be a lot of difference between them, but sometimes there is quite a bit of difference. This one's got tanks, jet planes, biplanes, and there's different mo modes for it, you know, like capture the flag or, you know, all kinds of different handicaps you can put on it. And, uh, yeah, pretty neat when they did that. Uh, same thing with this, Super Breakout's actually nine telegames, uh, Super Breakout, Progressive, Cavity, and Double, and uh, some others too, so yeah, we got Super Breakout, that's pretty neat, actually, I kind of remember the Breakout games from when I was younger, and then we got uh, <laughs> one of the greatest titles for a freaking game I've ever heard, Human Cannonball, that sounds exciting, get loaded in a cannonball and get fucking shot into space, or whatever, I don't know, I, I can't even see how this is a game, but... Okay, I assume you have to hit the target correctly or you kill your dude. So, yeah. <laughs> awesome. And then we got uh, Demons to Diamonds again. We got that fucking price tag right on the front. I'm going to have to take those off. Uh, Demons to Diamonds, pretty cool looking game. Uh, real common, though. I always seem to see that one. Anytime you see an Atari lot, there's a Demon to Diamonds. This one, I kind of want to play. It just looks cool. And when I looked up uh, footage of it, it actually looked pretty fun. Not to mention Activision games. Back in the day, were pretty darn good, and this is uh, Barnstorming, another funny title. I uh, thought it was Brainstorming at first, and then I looked at it closer, and it was like, Barnstorming, yeah. Apparently you're going to infiltrate some barns, yes, with your German troops. 
Okay, so the next one is one I am very familiar with. It's actually one of my favorite Atari games ever, 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 ever. And you know, it's one of those uh, games that was made by a totally different company that had to shape their cartridge different because they wanted to, I guess. And that is by iMagic or Imagic. But uh, the game is Demon Attack, and this is basically a Space Invaders clone. But it's better than Space Invaders. Uh, the the uh, enemies move back and forth a lot more. There's a lot more movement to it. A little bit more fluid, in my opinion. Demon's Attack is better than Space Invaders. Maybe that's because I don't really play Space Invaders much. But yeah, really was actually stoked about that because I literally have not held one of these Demon Attack cartridges since I was a kid. I used to have one. Okay, and then we get on to a couple oddballs. Uh, man, I really need to get through these. Uh, the first one I got is an oddball because it's for the 7800, and that is uh, Choplifter. And uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Never owned a 7800 or a Game Boy, so sweet. And then we got a couple Intellivision loose games. Uh, skiing, nice. Uh, they just have the end labels, no like labels or anything like that. And then uh, one of the funny shaped ones. This is kind of cool because it's also made by Magic, and they just made a smaller version of it. Uh, it's a different game, but they actually have, probably do have both of these games on both systems. This is Atlantis, and uh, I don't know much about rarity on games, but I know Atlantis 2 is really, really hard to find. In fact, um, I think Atlantis 2 has just a sticker right over an Atlantis 1 cart that says Atlantis 2 on it. It's like a prototype that only a few got released of or some shit like that. I don't know. Could be talking out my ass again. I do that a lot. So then we got the boxed in television games and I'm just going to go in alphabetical order here. We got Las Vegas, Poker, and Blackjack which, uh, jeez, that cover, man. It looks, I can't even describe that cover. It's just God, man. Talk about a blast from the past. That is crazy. And then we got uh, Major League Baseball and these are cool because, you know, most of these have the instruction booklets and they have the, actually the little Overlays for the controllers to tell you what buttons to press when and where, and yeah, pretty neat. This one had my favorite cover art ever. This is like straight out of like a 50s, 60s like sci-fi novel. This is amazing. And this is something you'd see on a Twilight Zone cover uh, if they made books. <laughs> this is just Night Stalker. That is the coolest cover like ever. It is really cool. And not only that, but the uh, back picture of the game looks really cool. This one does not have instruction booklets, but man, I'm just stoked on that one because of how cool it looks. And then we got uh, nothing exciting in the NFL football. Uh, this one's got the instructions and stuff. Uh, not really a sports games guy, but you know, it's a freaking complete box and television game. I'm not going to complain. And then Sea Battle, and this again has little overlays for the controllers, and this one's even got the... Uh, little plastic tray. Wow, I didn't even notice that before. That's pretty neat. I didn't notice if any of the other ones did. But uh, that's pretty cool and really neat cover on that one too. And then another one I really love the cover on, Space Battle. Just awesome, like freaking like early comic book art. It's just amazing looking. So cool. And this one's got the overlays and the manuals and it's got the little plastic tray. That's pretty cool. So, uh, last one that I got from my sister and Jason was, uh, Space Hawk. This one's got a really cool cover, too. It's just so trippy. It looks like he's orbiting a freaking gumball or something. It's awesome. So cool. And this game looks awesome, too. And this one has instructions and overlays. So, yeah, pretty darn cool. Uh, thank you very much, Jason. Thank you very much, Veronica. Uh, still owe you ten bucks. <laughs> I gotta give that to you. But uh, yeah, awesome pickups. I just I, I don't usually collect stuff like that, but I, I can't pass when it's cheap. It comes from a family member. I mean, yeah. And eventually I'm gonna try to get the system so I can test all this out, make sure it all works. But man, it's pretty hard to destroy Atari stuff. I'm sure it all works. So uh, okay, awesome. So uh, the rest of this stuff is from my buddy Kevin. Now, Kevin, uh, first of all, is cool enough to just bring a gift. That's freaking amazing. Uh, one of the last times he was over, I just randomly gave him a game. I can't even remember what it was. And uh, he returned the favor, and he got me a game that he, like, ordered and then realized what it was and was like, oh, I don't want that freaking game. And it's uh, one of the Bible games. It's the early years, King of Kings. And um, I like these freaking black cartridges. Of all the unlicensed games, these are my favorite carts. Uh, I like this grooved out part right here, and I just like that it's black. The uh, labels are always kind of crap condition. But yeah, pretty cool to see. I've actually never had any of the Bible games. Uh, I think it's really funny that a Bible company, like a church 
outfit is like making illegal games for a system that has strict policies against people making games for their systems that aren't Nintendo related. <laughs> like, if this does not have a Nintendo seal of quality anywhere on it. This is not a Nintendo uh, product, and it's not endorsed or uh, wanted by Nintendo, and it's from a freaking religious group. So that, that kind of cracks me up a little bit. It's a little hypocritical, if you ask me, but yeah, pretty funny. Okay, so the big thing that I got. Here's the big thing that I got. Now, I got one game that I think is a little more special than even this, but you guys are going to be like, whoa, holy crap, I finally got this console. I've been after this for a while. It's super heavy. Bear with me for one second. Okay, let me see if I can grab this and not drop this. I finally got a PS3, and not just any PS3. I got a backwards compatible PS3, and a very nice one. It's in very good condition. <sighs> a little bit dusty. Um, yeah, this has actually been sitting on my shelf, and every video I've been taking it off so you don't see it. Uh, because I'm always behind on pickup videos. PlayStation logo's crooked. But yeah, um, pretty awesome. Finally got a PS3, and the fact that it's a backwards compatible PS3 just makes that amazing. And uh, I guess he scored it from somebody for 100 bucks with a bunch of games, which is a steal. And he basically passed on the savings to me, which was cool as shit. He brought it straight over, and uh, he basically said, well, what do you got to trade? Just give me some games. And I just gave him some Super Nintendo games, some NES games, uh, one that I regret, and I'm kind of, I, I, I think I've got another copy coming. Uh, the one game he got was Bubble Bobble for sure. He also got uh, Super Double Dragon, and a really good game that he got was Metal Marines for Super Nintendo. But anyways, he just got, like, you know, a healthy stack of games. And uh, he passed off his $100 score to me, uh, which was a PlayStation 3 and uh, about six games. So I'm going to quickly go through those games because I've never really played most of them. Uh, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 3. Mon blah, blah, blah. This one, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 3. Uh, not into those games. Just figured I'd, you know, trade these or whatever. And same thing, Modern Warfare 4. And uh, there are a few more. Assassin's Creed 3. Pretty cool. And the three really good ones, I thought. Uh, we got Borderlands 2. I've heard this is a great game, so I'm looking forward to that. And we got Fallout 3. Too bad it's a stupid greatest hits. You know, Sony, you know, it's fine to make greatest hits. Why do you have to make these freaking packages red? God, this irritated the hell out of me. Even on PS2, you got all these nice black label games, and then you got your freaking greatest hits red label crap. Ugh. And, like, the red label ones on the PS2 aren't nearly as bad. But like, man, these PS1 Greatest Hits ones just kill me, man. I freaking hate them. My goal is to replace all of those. Jeez, but yeah, this is terrible, terrible packaging. I mean, it actually looks cool, but they should have just made them all red. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Fallout 3, I hear that's a game that you can sink hundreds of hours into, uh, perfecting it and getting everything. Uh, a lot of friends of mine have said that they've just put tons of hours into that game. And one I don't know about a lot, but I know it's newer and I know a lot of people like it. Shadow of Mordor, pretty freaking cool, stoked about that one. Uh, definitely the best game of the bunch. And uh, well, debatably, Fallout 3, some people would say is the best. But uh, yeah, oh, and it did also come with the uh, two wireless controllers and the charger, which is freaking awesome. Uh, did not have the cord for that, and the charger is missing like this little plastic freaking rail right here, but I mean, who cares? For the deal I got, and it was just a trade, and it was basically landed in my lap. Again, don't usually collect things after OG PlayStation and or OG uh, Xbox and PlayStation 2, but uh, shit, PS3, I've been after that for a while, and I have some other good games that are freaking really, really awesome that I can't wait to show you guys that I've gotten, and uh, yeah, I'm really stoked. I've already played a little bit of PS3, and I'm pretty stoked on it. Though the games that I've been playing on PS3 are none of these. So you'll have to see a future pickup video to see what it is I have been playing. Okay, then, the last two games that I have for you guys. Let's get this video wrapped up. So what's funny is Kevin actually kind of bitched about this game a little bit before he, like, offered it to me. <laughs> so it was kind of like one of those, like, this tastes like crap. Want to try it? Like, yeah. So, and he said I should try it, and I'm a dirty liar because I still haven't tried it. Uh, Pacific Theater of Operations, PTO. And uh, this is kind of like a strategy game from what I understand, and it's like kind of a war strategy game. Uh, never played it before, never really heard of it before either, so that's kind of cool. And then the second game, the last game actually, the second game of the last games. Um, 
Okay, so this is not as impressive as a backwards compatible PS3 to most people, but this is a really hard game to find. I've literally never seen a copy of this in the wild. Uh, Splatterhouse 2, and it is just beat to crap. It's got stickers on it, it's torn label, it's got writing on it. I mean, I don't care. This game plays beautifully, and it's awesome. It's a, it's a uh, horror beat-em-up. I mean, how can you not like that? Splatterhouse is a pretty cool video game series, and uh, arguably Splatterhouse 2 is the best one. I am on the lookout for 1 and 3, but getting number 2 first is pretty awesome, and uh, just something I never, ever, ever see, and something I'm very happy to own. Thank you very much, Kevin, for trading that to me, and uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. That's all the pickups. Very stoked on Splatterhouse and television games, freaking PS3 goodness, all this crap. Very cool. Very, very cool. So, i got a question for you guys. Every week I try to have one question for you guys. And this time it's what time period of video gaming do you guys collect for? Like I said, I generally collect for like NES and Sega Master System era all the way up to PS3 now. <laughs> but generally up to like PS2 and original Xbox. But um, yeah, obviously there are exceptions. What do you guys generally collect for? What eras are you most comfortable and most wanting to collect games for? That's the question of the day. Leave a comment below if you like the video also. And if you also like the video, give a thumbs up. Uh, yeah, if you want to see more videos by me, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It's down there. It's red and it says subscribe. But I know YouTube has had a lot of problems since they split with Google Plus with the notifications things. If you guys want to make sure that you're actually seeing all of my videos and don't have to actually go through my list of videos, you can join uh, Nintendo on Facebook, just like the page, and I post every single one of my videos on my Nintendo page, so you guys can see it there too. You don't even have to worry about notifications, you can just go and check to see if it's there. Uh, so yeah, check out Nintendo. If you like the video, also go ahead and share it with a friend, that'd be awesome. And uh, yeah, that's all I have for you guys. Thank you very much for watching, you guys are awesome, and thank you to everybody that has helped with my collection, random uh, garage sale people. Dan and uh, my sister and Jason and Kevin and let's not forget Josh thank you very much Josh for the Nintendo box this is awesome uh, yeah everything on this table is awesome freaking so sweet so yeah thank you very much for watching and keep rocking the retro games